In addition to the wheels, there are also controls at the bottom and top here. The first is Color Boost. And this controls saturation, but at the beginning of the process. So Color Boost is applied before lift gamma gain or offset. There is also a saturation control, but that's applied after all those controls. So in terms of order, Color Boost happens first. So if I raise Color Boost, it's more saturated. If I reduce it, down negative 100, it becomes grayscale. Saturation, which happens after the controls, that gives you a more subtle result. There's shad or shadows, which will lift the shadow area or pull it down towards zero. There's highlights, so stretch out the distribution towards the highlights or push the highlights down towards zero. There's hue, which operates the same as it does in fusion, that allow you to move colors to the color spectrum. So let's just set top controls here. Temperature, which will tint the image, in this case towards red if it's positive, or blue if it's negative. Of course, you generally don't want to move the controls in such an extreme fashion. There's also tint, but as opposed to moving the image towards red and blue, it moves it towards violet or green. You can see when I go towards violet, the tint of 100 increases the red and blue while decreasing the green. There's contrast, and that works as you would expect. Raise contrast, it's more contrasty. Lower contrast, the channels become more and more identical until it becomes pure gray. Pivot affects the value around which contrast operates. So if you raise pivot, say towards one, the contrast is centered around that value. And the result will be different if the pivot is a low value. So significant changes based on pivot, regardless of what your contrast value is. Mid detail is not actually a color control, it's a way to sharpen or soften the image based on current edge contrast. So if you raise mid detail, areas with high contrast, high contrast edges become even more contrasty. If you lower it, areas with low contrast will become softer. So it's one trick for softening skin on the actor's face. Let's try a different set of controls with the primaries. And those are the color bars, which you can get to by clicking this right here. The color bar controls offer the same set of controls you would have with the wheels. However, it replaces the actual wheels with vertical sliders. And these are sometimes referred to as printer lights and are a way to emulate pre-digital motion picture film grading. They essentially they work in the same manner. You can click drag the luminance slider to affect all the channels or grab a single color channel to affect that. Aside from the color bars, you have a third set of controls here to the right. Log wheels, designed for logarithmic HDR footage. Here the lift, gamma, and gain are replaced with shadow, midtone, and highlights. So it breaks the image up into zones. There's no luminance cell here, but you can still affect individual channels. That said, the horizontal wheels will affect all those channels equally. So for example, I can lift the shadow area. Now there is a default size for each zone. And right now the shadow zone is fairly small. You can change the zone size up here by altering the range cells. So pixels with values less than the left cell will fall into the shadow zone. Pixels with values above the right cell fall into the highlight zone. The midtone zone is between those two. So for example, I want to increase the size of my shadow zone, I can raise the left cell value. And while I'm at it, I can decrease the size of the highlight zone and then move the midtones to the right by increasing the right cell value. Now when I alter the shadow control, there's much greater effect as the shadow zone takes up a larger area. I'll reset that. So even though this is designed for logarithmic footage, you can still use it with non-log SDR footage if you want to. It simply allows you to have a way to alter the shadow, midtone, and highlight zone separately.